Welcome to the GBN Smith webinar. It is 11 o'clock Eastern AM sharp. So we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Thank you for joining us. Please <clears throat> come in, uh, get comfortable. We're going to cover everything around uh, what's happening in the 360 suite over the last six months and then an eye to the future of 2017, both a roadmap for GBN Smith as well as the 360 suite and 365, which we will be getting into here momentarily. My name is Nathan Crook, I'm a sales director here with GBN Smith. I have over 12 years in the business objects world, and I have the pleasure of being joined by Pauline Lancaster. She's a pre sales engineer here with GBN Smith, and over 10 years of experience administering the business objects platform. So, between the two of us, we're going to do our best. Uh, to share everything that GB and Smith has going uh, forward this year, and uh, we really appreciate your time. So today, many of you are probably in the 360 category. So you've got the, our sweet, full suite of solutions focused on the business objects platform, but we have been asked by many, many clients over the years, uh, you know, that insight that you give us around security with the matrix. Now, I would love to have that in other areas. And so three years ago, we decided to make a push to bring a platform agnostic solution, 365 view, uh, which not only will be your gateway for managing security and business objects, but across all platforms eventually. Right now we have about 14 different technologies including Oracle databases, SharePoint, uh, Windows AD, IBM Cognos, HANA, Tableau, the list goes on. Um, so we're going to dig into both of these today um, and please take us, uh, take us to the next slide. And Pauline, why don't you walk us through what's been going on in the 360 suite for over the last six months. Okay, thanks Nathan. Um, so first we'll cover all the tools and the updates that have been added to the tool since July. Um, first tool is 360 View. So this is our tool to manage your BO security, perform bulk updates, and you also have the ability to document your security and your entire environment. Uh, so a couple of updates with this tool, uh, update crystal report connections using Oracle, that's been added, and archiving job instances. So if you have a lot of instances in your environment and you're backing them up, um, this might be a feature that you're interested in. Maybe you want to upgrade, um, but you don't want to migrate all of those instances instances, yet we have a lot of customers that are still required to maintain those historical instances. So this feature will allow you to archive those instances and then you can uh, remove them so they're not included in your migration, um, but you still have them if you need to ever go back to them. And again, so if, if you do uh, want any of these features, we can always help you with an update. So if you have this in, um, installed and it's you haven't gotten the latest update, um, just let us know and we can always help you with updating to the latest version. Uh, they're all available on the support site. Okay, the next tool is 360 Plus. This is our backup promotion and versioning tool. Uh, so uh, as you know, Business Objects uh, 4.2 has had a recycle bin. Um, we have we've had a recycle bin for many years now, um, and we've added some extended capability with the BI 4.2 recycle bin. Another addition uh, to the tool has been promotions to SFTP. So previously FTP was the only option. Now you can promote to SFFTP, SFTP. And we've also made a number of performance improvements with 360 plus. So if you have a large environment that you're backing up, um, you might benefit from updating to the latest version because uh, we have improved the performance on the backups. Next tool is 360 Cast. This is our publication and bursting tool. Uh, the new feature that was added was to allow you to set up local document refreshes. Moving on to 360 Bind. This is the automated regression testing tool. Um, we've made, made a number of additional features to this. Uh, the first one is Use Last Instance. This has been popular. Uh, so if you are um, you have scheduled instances of your reports and you are including them in a bind task, 
uh, you don't actually have to reschedule the reports, so you can actually use the last instance. So you're not required to um, rerun the reports if you already have them out there. That's been pretty popular. Uh, another um, update is an Excel export uh, for detailed differences. So previously, when you ran your bind comparison and got the results of the comparison, there was an Excel export, um, but it was very sum it was a summary, so it didn't have a lot of details about what was different. Um, now we've included this Excel export um, contains all the detailed differences. Another feature that's been added is compare numeric values. Um, so this is an option when you're doing your comparison, um, you could actually compare numeric values. So if you're comparing uh, values that are maybe one value is 34 and on the other report it's 34.0, um, the numeric value is still the same. So that wouldn't be flagged as a difference. Um, and that's an option you can check on or off. So 360i is the latest version of this is 1.70.1. Um, so some of the additions to this tool is you now have the ability to extract prompt, prompt values that are stored in documents. So if documents are saved with values, you can report on that now. Um, we have a new schedule metadata. Um, so this is uh, extracting additional fields from instances. So if you have a lot of report instances, we have customers that, that want a lot of information about, um, about those instances, who's viewing them, who's refreshing them. Um, so that will be included as well. Uh, we have a raw webby extraction mode. Um, so this actually, um, we found this is about eight times faster than the uh, previous 360i's job um, when running the webby job. It doesn't extract all of the information that was previously extracted, but it does uh, provide you with um, the ability to extract, uh, to run the jobs a lot quicker and, and get and get some information from your Webby reports. Another feature is we now have the ability to report on um, when a user saves an Excel or PDF. So if a user runs a report and saves it as Excel or saves it as P PDF, uh, that action can be logged and you can report on that. Um, we've added more information on business view LOVs, and we also have been working on new report layouts, uh, so we're following the IBCS standards uh, for report layouts. So with all the improvements with GB and Smith products, the company has been going through a great deal of improvement and growth it's, as well. So just to give you an update on GB and Smith, uh, we're up over 70 people now. The uh, over 50% of the team is focused on R&D. So both 360 and 365 are getting a great deal of attention uh, and growth in those areas technically. We're up over 500 clients worldwide over a million administrated users and uh, for the fourth time in a row we're celebrating uh, in fact this week being named to the EMEA Deloitte Fast 500 so it's a pretty awesome achievement. Um, it's good to see uh, our company grow not not just from a, a product and a solution standpoint but just as a company as a whole so uh, beautiful things going on. Among those, we were joined in the spring by the Business Objects co-founder, Denis Taillier. He saw 365, understood all the good work that we've been doing in 360, and actually said, you know, 365, this is the future. This is as big as Business Objects inventing the semantic layer. Um, you know, I want to be a part of what you guys have going on. So this has been a huge uh, feather in the cap and a great deal of expertise and, and just an honor to have that type of, uh, of heritage come into the, the board of GB and Smith. So that brings us with an eye to the future. All right, so we're going to cover over the 360 roadmap as well as the 365 roadmap here over 2017. We're going to be continuing to manage and support the original platform of the 360 suite, so no worries there. Uh, but we recognize that there have been a ton of advancements in both computing power, web languages, and user interfaces, so we want to take advantage of those and continue to improve the user experience. This is a picture of the entire GB and Smith layout right here. Uh, Pauline, why don't you take us through how this is going to uh, 
go through evolutions in 2017. Okay, so we're making a number of improvements to um, to our suite. So we're going to develop a new user interface, um, and the tools will all be integrated within that new user interface. Um, first, let's start with 365 View. So this allows you to manage your business object security. Um, so this is a new user interface. This will actually replace 360 View. So if you have 360 View where you manage your security, you'll be familiar with our uh, patented matrix. Um, this tool will will actually replace that. Um, so we're going to actually, so it, it allows you to manage multiple applications, not just business objects. Um, it allows for business-driven security so that business users have the ability to view security, um, have insight into who has access to what, um, and this also has improved performance over the security um, that you currently have in 360 View. So I'm going to jump into a live demo to show you what 365 View looks like if you haven't seen it already. Um, okay, so I'm going to log into 365. Okay, and I select logins. Here are a list of all the connectors that I have available to me. So as Nathan mentioned, uh, we are able to view security on a number of different platforms. Um, if you only have business objects, that's all you would see um, in your list. So I'm going to connect actually to, uh, to business objects. Okay, so this logs me in to business objects so I can view the security. Um, this will be si similar to uh, 365 view, but um, someone's asking if you already have 365, or sorry, 360 view, if you can upgrade to 365 view. I don't know if you have the answer for that, Nathan. <clears throat> so we can take that uh, discussion offline. Okay. Yes, in some instances. No, in some. So it's a it's a case by case basis, and happy to discuss. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, so the 365 view. So here I've got um, my user groups that that you're familiar with. These are all all of my user groups, and you can see the list of your users. Uh, so these can be managed much like you would would in uh, 360 view. Um, and then you've got all of your resources, so your folders, inboxes, all of that. Um, I can co collapse everything if I want. Um, I'm just going to show you what the matrix looks like in this tool. So I'm going to click on security on public folders. And here I'll expand this window. Um, so on the left-hand side are all my folders. The right-hand side, you'll see all of my actors. So those are all of my user groups. Uh, I can select finance and... Um, I can choose to select um, whatever the number of levels that I want. So let me select three levels. So those are all my folders are selected on the left. And then on the right hand side, I will select my groups. So I'll select the finance group as well as any of the subgroups. So I'll just select three levels. Um, you'll see in the middle, the matrix will appear. Um, this may be something that you're familiar with in um, from 360 View. Uh, the intersection of each of these will show the security that's been applied. Anything in black that you see, those are the explicit rights. And then in italic italicized letters, uh, it's also in gray italicized letters. Um, those are the inherited rights. So you immediately see who has access, uh, you know, which groups have access to those finance folders um, by clicking on any of those cells, you can modify the security, um, and then we also have the ability to document that. Um, so just wanted to give you an overview of what 365 View looks like. Um, if you're interested in the tool, we could certainly um, set up another uh, more detailed um, demo for you, but just wanted to give you a sort of a high-level look at the tool itself. So we're going to go back. We'll go back to the presentation. So that's 365 View. Again, it's already available. It allows you to manage and streamline your um, business object security. Okay, and now for the, the future of the tool. So this is, we're, we're going to have an actually a totally new interface with the tool. So um, updating it, a lot use, more user-friendly, um, 
using uh, more advanced technologies um, or context-based menus, so easier to navigate. Um, so I'm going to go through what will be included in those tools, and we'll also do a live demo as well. Um, so currently being beta tested, and um, that's uh, uh, being released right now, is 360 Live. Um, so 360 Live will replace 360 View. So it will have all the same features, um, except for it will not have the security tab, because that's being replaced by 365 View. Um, you'll still be able to uh, manage all your content, put a document, and um, uh, do bulk updates in your environment. So everything that you can do in the CMC, but a lot easier, faster. Um, and we're also adding monitoring, which is a huge feature that a lot of customers have been asking for. Um, so we're adding that. As part of 360 Live, uh, 360 init will automatically uh, be included. That was previously an add-on tool. Um, if you're not familiar with 360 init, this is um, a tool that allows you to, in Excel, you can actually uh, put in all of your structures, so all your folders, all your groups, users, um, universe folders. So all of that can be put into an Excel um, document, and then you can import it into an environment. So say you've created a new environment and you want it to be structured just like another environment, you have the ability to actually um, uh, promote or import all of that so your um, structure is exactly the same as it was in another environment. So a lot of customers use this that have to replicate a lot of environments and they want them always to be exactly the same. Um, so I'm going to actually jump into a live demo to show you um, what this tool looks like um, and also kind of give you an idea of what our monitoring will look like. So. Okay, let me just refresh. Okay, so first I'm going to log in. I'll log, log into my demo environment. And this is what the, the new tool will look like. And eventually, currently, we're, we're working on 360 uh, Live. So that will be basically the, the features from 360 View will be integrated first. Um, and then eventually, all of the tools will be integrated into this one tool. I can select user groups. Here I get a list of all of my user groups. I can select those. Um, by right-clicking, I get a context menu, so all the tasks that are available will appear. Um, this is a lot easier to navigate than if you're familiar with having to, um, we have a lot of different icons for different features um, in the current tool. So this is, um, I can just choose open to open the finance group. Here you'll see a tab appears. Um, this is another feature that's been added where you can actually, um, previously if you opened a group, um, if you wanted to open another group, it would close that first group. But here you can still see that um, my group is still open. So here I've got, now I've got my finance tab and my administrator um, group open so I can toggle between the groups if I want to. Um, and so on the right hand side again I've got the option so for exports so we still have the ability to export um, this new tool will actually allow you to um, run the exports in the background previously uh, if you were exporting something it would freeze up your screen while um, you weren't able to navigate the rest of the tool um, but this will all be done in the background and uh, you also have the bulk update um, option. So for I'm on the uh, groups tab, so I can update owners or any of the bulk user management. Um, so I can collapse that tab, and then I've got all my resources, so your public folders, and all the ability to uh, export that content and do any bulk updates is available as well. Um, one of the new features is drill down. Um, so I'm going to actually select resources here. Um, so drill down is uh, will replace the audit tab, um, if some of you are familiar with that. Um, so it allows you to actually um, generate lists, kind of kind of replaces query builder or is is a addition, you know, a, a, um, advancement to query builder. Um, so without having to know um, the SQL that has to be generated. So here I can drag and drop. It's kind of like a, a webby interface. I can drag and drop objects that I want to include in my filter. Um, so let's see, I'm going to select connections. 
And here I can say I want anything, any connections that are like 360. I can add that filter. So here are the, the SQL you might be familiar with where SI name is like 360. That's added. I can select process. And here I get a list of connections. I can further drill down. Let's, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to say universe using connection. So here I can drag that in. I'm just going to run that. Any, I want to see any universe using those connections. So here's a list of all of my universes using the 360 connection. And I can further drill down. Uh, maybe I want to see all the reports using those universes. I'll drag that in and run that query. And here's my list of uh, reports against those universes. And this can all be exported to Excel um, so that you can generate those lists. So that's one of the one of the new uh, features in the tool. Um, now let me show you uh, monitoring. So let's go to monitoring. Here I can create a new monitor. So this is all live. So this first option is uh, used if you just want to view what's going on um, in your environment at at that time. So you don't have to go log into the server. You can just uh, um, from from 360. Live, you'll be able to uh, view the performance of your of your environment. So here I've selected. You have a number of different things to select. I've selected the adaptive job server, the CMS server, and the Web processing server. I'll click Add, and then this graph will appear showing me the performance um, of my tool. So here, it's pretty flat right now. I'm probably the only one logged in right now, um, so it'll just show you uh, the memory that's used for those processes. Um, so this is live. This would be something that, um, you know, real time that you wanted to view. Um, what might be more interesting are the watchers. I'm going to select watchers. And here I can create a new watcher. So this will allow you to um, identify areas. So maybe I want to know um, uh, okay, so maybe I want to um, identify any time my CPU load exceeds 80%. Um, I can select CPU load. Um, I'll do that maybe on my CMS. Um, I can set the refresh rate. I'll set it to every 60 seconds, so every minute, and the data type unit will be percentage. I'll click next and you can enable these watchers. They can be set to manual or auto. You also have the ability to set time ranges when the um, as to when these watchers are actually running. Um, so maybe you do a restart every night um, of your environment and you obviously don't want to uh, um, be notified during that time that your system's gone down. So you can actually say, um, so maybe I'll say, I just want to make sure my system's up, everything um, you know, everything's processing normally um, from 2 a.m. to, uh, let's say, 10 p.m. So I could add that range if I wanted to. Um, you can, and you can add multiple ranges as well um, if that's necessary. Um, so here, maybe I want to create an alert. So anytime my CPU reaches um, 80%, um, I want to be warned. So you can choose to either be warned by email or um, or uh, the file system. So you can select email and then populate the email address that you want um, to send, the, send that alert to. Um, you've got a number of actions that can be taken when the alert um, is sent. So you can restart or stop the service. Uh, so if you, you know, you find that you're adaptive job service is down, um, it's great to be alerted that it's down, um, but you also want to start it, right? And maybe you're not um, in a location where you can start it at that time, but you get the alert and want to be able to restart it. So you can actually select to uh, 
uh, restart the service. If it exceeds, you know, so in this case, if my CPU for my CMS exceeds 80%, I'm going to restart it. Um, you might not actually want to do that. Um, maybe you want to set it to if it exceeds 80% for a certain amount of time, um, you know, maybe for 10 minutes because it could spike to that. That can also be set um, as well. So you would just add that, add that um, alerter and um, and that would notify you. And you can have as many alert alerters as you want. If it's certain processes you're looking at, if it's the uh, the box as a whole, um, our monitoring uh, our monitoring tool is. Um, it's, it runs just as an agent on your server. Um, it's written in HTML5, so it's very light. Um, it's not um, going to affect your server at all. It does require a database. All of the data um, is stored in the database, so nothing is stored on the server. Um, unlike, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the monitoring tool um, that SAP Business Objects provides, but that um, saves all the data on your um, file store and um, it's also written in Flash, so it's not um, something that a lot of people like to run. Um, but this is very light, and um, and I think I think this will be very beneficial for users. So again, this is currently being beta tested, um, but we do expect it available in the first quarter of 2017. Pauline, we had a question come up around starting and restarting servers on the platform. Okay. Um, can you address? that area does this do anything beyond what you can do in a CMC interface is the question um, so as far as restarting no this is more so it's more monitoring it's not necessarily um, managing your processes um, yeah so it it's as far as restarting the servers it's it's more monitoring if you set a threshold saying okay i want you know i know that when my process you know my adaptive job server process reaches this amount of memory or cpu i know that no one is able to run anything so i want to restart it um so it's it's giving some logic as to when you restart it so it's not you're manually going in and restarting a process um so it's it's definitely different than what you have in the in the CMC, um, I, hopefully I answered the question. Okay, um, so I'm going to jump back into uh, the presentation about um, the updates. So that that's 360 Live again um, will be available in quarter one of 2017. Okay, uh, 360 plus. This will also be integrated with the uh, new interface, um, the backup and promotion tool. This will be integrated or will be available in quarter two of 2017. Um, that's the plan, um, and we will um, have you know it's the backup and promotion engine just like before. Uh, 360 verse will automatically be included in the tool. So currently, if you want the versioning tool, um, you actually it's an add-on. Um, but now it will be included with 360 plus by default. And we are actually updating 360 verse um, to include a workflow. Uh, so a lot of customers want to use versioning, but they have a workflow process that they want to follow. So maybe there's an approval through the process and um, that is actually being added to the tool. Okay, 360 cast, uh, that will be, this will be integrated with the tool um, in quarter four of 2017. Uh, this will have a dynamic task system um, and also an advanced external trigger. It'll be easier to maintain your cast jobs. It'll be a lot more user friendly. Um, there'll actually be a URL based uh, uh, functionality so that you can actually just you can just update the URL if you want to change which CMS you're running your tasks in so it'll be a lot easier to sort of transport between different environments 360 bind again this has a lot of the similar features of CAS so again the dynamic task system and advanced external triggers are also making a number of performance improvements with bind um, this will be available in 2018 so this is the last tool that will be integrated um, with the entire suite um, with the new um, interface Okay, so 360 eyes, um, 
We'll also have the dynamic task system and um, advanced external triggers. Um, this will actually, you'll be able to manage your 360i's jobs from, um, from 360. So the 360 suite, you can actually start um, and manage your jobs from there. If you have any jobs that have stopped, it'll be very easy to, or that have been running for a while and you, and you want to stop them, you'll be easily be able to easily see them from the interface. Um, so you no longer have to go into the CMC or the launch pad to schedule your jobs. You'll be able to do that all within 360. So because uh, 360Eyes is being added um, to 360, now all of our tools will actually be um, web tools. So we've got the first icon is 365 View. Uh, that's a web tool, 360 View, which will be 360 Live, uh, 360 Plus, Cast, Bind, and Eyes will all be part of the business object server. Um, 360Eyes will still require um, a database and will install it install on the application server. Um, the actual, um, the new interface will also require a database. Um, as I mentioned, the monitoring is stored in a database and um, everything about the tool, all the um, preferences and all your tasks are actually stored in a database as well. Um, so a database will be required for that, for the new, new tool. Okay, and just so you know, so even though we are, um, you know, updating our tools and adding a new tool, we're still continuing to update our existing tools. So as they are today, we are we're still continuing to update them. So 360Eyes um, in this year, we'll have a 2.0 version, um, and there'll be a number of new features added to that. Um, so Design Studio and Lumera metadata will be included. So we currently have some of that information, but there'll be a lot more um, information that'll be available. Uh, there'll be a data services job, job that's added to 360Eyes. Um, you'll have the ability to run the CMS job in Delta mode. So currently when you um, change your 360Eyes parameter to Delta, that only applies to the Webby jobs and Crystal jobs, um, but it will be available for the CMS job in the future, and then we'll also have database schema updates as well. Okay, so that's sort of the future of the tool. And again, we're constantly, we're still, you know, supporting the existing tools, any updates, we'll be making, um, you know, also adding new features to the current tools um, and, you know, resolving any issues that are um, there. But this is the future of the tool, um, and we, you know, we're very excited about all the changes. And and um, there will be uh, actually this will be supporting cluster mode as well um, with the new tools, and uh, we think everybody will um, be happy with with the changes that are going to be made. Um, so if anybody has any questions now, we can get to those. Um, I see there are some already in the chat. Um, Absolutely. So we've got um, maybe a suggestion, perhaps something that's been taken into account already. Um, Eric wants to know if a customer should be able to enter the URL as it can be installed on another server. Is there a new option in general preferences to be able to, to manually update that? Um, I am not Sure. Um, I might need to follow up on exactly what um, is meant by that. Enter you to install another server. Um, I'm not actually sure. I'm not sure how to answer that. We can follow up and follow up with you, Eric, and, and get that information to you. I'll, yeah, save, your, I'll save your question. And uh, Philip wants to know, when creating a promotion or backup job, is it now going to be possible to organize them in folders instead of just having a, a long list? So I, yeah, for the new the new uh, environment or the new uh, feature, I'm not um, sure about that either. I'll have to follow up with you as well um, on that, and we'll save all your questions and follow up because some of these I every, the tool is very new right now, so I'm not exactly sure all the all the pieces that will you know what will be changed with with the tools. Exactly, 360 plus is in the queue for for quarter two of 2017, so we've got a little bit of time there. And, um, you know, perhaps that's a great suggestion that might be included. 
we'll have right. to uh, follow up on that. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So, uh, Philip, also in 360i's 2018, uh, will it be possible to manage extraction parameters through a web page instead of a parameter file on a server? Yeah, so that, again, I'll, I'll have to follow up, but I think um, based on the fact that eyes, you'll be able to manage the jobs through uh, 360, um, I think that that might be possible, but I'll follow up with that. But that's a good suggestion. That would that would help um, a lot, but I'll follow up on with that as well. And, Alan, currently, if you are a 360 view customer, um, there is no licensing or cost impact for, migra uh, for migrating over to 365 view for business objects. Um, if you want to add other technologies, so if uh, the administrator or other people in the organization want to take advantage of being able to you know, administer Windows AD or Tableau or SharePoint or any of the other technologies, that's when you would see an impact. Um, but otherwise, it's a uh, straight one-to-one. Um, -one. Perfect. Any other questions? Let's go to the next. Uh... So with all of this great uh, updates and new information coming along in the new platform, we are also corresponding with a number of uh, webinars on the topic. So this is the schedule for Q1. Uh, this recording is going to be sent out. So you'll be able to get this list, but please look for you know emails and uh, information on our website around these events, and uh, you should be receiving an invite as well. Right. So if you want more information about live, we just sort of touched on just uh, the high level. Um, we can you can join the webinar, or you could also schedule time with us to uh, delve into a little more deep. Deeper. Um, we do have a question about SAP BPC. Is there a connector for SAP BPC? I am not familiar with what BPC is. Does anyone? Any, uh, yes, um, budgeting, planning, and consolidations. Uh, okay. So that hasn't been addressed yet. It. You, the future is for this to be able to address all technology, so I know that it will be in the list. I'm not sure on where it falls in the priority list, so definitely uh, we'll need to follow up with you on there for, for any sort of uh, sense of timing. All right, take us to the last. All right, so we've gotten to questions today. If you saw something interesting uh, that you don't currently have in your platform, please reach out. Uh, you're, we're happy to help support you with a trial. Um, we'll help you with the install. We'll help you with um, actually walking through and, and help you understand the menus and really doing uh, enablement so that you can fully test this out and see if there's uh, any sort of value to bring new and different pieces into your landscape. Thanks so much for your time. We truly appreciate it, and we appreciate your uh, business, and we look forward to uh, continuing to bring value in 2017. Thanks so much.